everybody well we're back here with the beast and um, yeah I've ordered a bit more hardware for it I wanted to change a couple of things over I'm just gonna show you those now um, because this is to a large extent in some ways it's overbuilt um, you know for the amount of uh, force that uh, that's on the printhead which is nothing um, it's really a bit overbuilt. So <clears throat> what I'm decided to do is, is change the belts. And I'll show you why in a bit of a close up. Here's the original belt. Um, it's, you know what, I don't know what measurements it is. Um, but here's a, like, here's a normal, this is the normal belting that you'd find on, on most 3D printers. And you can probably pick up how stiff this is so um, what I'm going to do is swap it over for this more supple belt um, it's just you know sometimes called g20 belt uh, the other thing is that that um, the belt on this side uh, was really fraying on the drive here I don't know if you if you can pick that up so I'm going to um, adapt this mechanism to take this smaller belt now I'm gonna to have to put in a smaller pulley uh, on both ends so I'm gonna to have to put a different pulley in on the motor and I'm gonna to have to put a different idler pulley in and I've actually got a toothed um, little tooth pulley there as an idler which is gonna go up here um, but I have to maintain the uh, layout here and all of the uh, um, critical alignments. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this as a template and I've got two, a left and a right version of this bracket more or less. So I'm going to um, whip this out and take some measurements off it and then what I'm going to do is drill a new hole um, to take a 5mm bolt. <laughs> Okay, so as you see, I have replaced all of the belting on the X and Y axes. And uh, as you see here, this is um, this is a 3D printed spacer that I've used, um, and I use those in a couple of different areas. Um, down here, here's another one. And so, uh, yeah, we're looking good. And time to do some wiring. And I bought these uh, selections of uh, silicone wire. Uh, so uh, this is fairly small gauge, but I just I bought this to uh, to um, do the uh, uh, do the motor wiring and you know other sundry things because uh, I wanted a really nice flexible wire, not like the rubbish that was that was in here when uh, when it was bought new. And I want to replace all these rubbish connectors. Uh, I can't remember what the uh, name of these are now, but uh, they were just absolute crap. Um, so I'll be um, redoing all that. This is the wiring for the heated bed. Um, I won't be needing that, obviously. Um, but, uh, you know, so I've just got to get into the, uh, into the rewiring side now. This is what I bought for this project. Now, um, it's the Alex Maker board, which is basically... Um, 
I think it's basically a ramps board. It's got um, two Y axes, um, so it's got outputs for two Y axes, which is which is useful for for what I'm doing. And it, it's built for a you know desktop laser engraver cutter type setup. Um, so you've got uh, X axis Y Y. Um, you've got power in. You've got a um, uh, a trigger output um, there. Um, oh, there's two trigger outputs. I think that might be the trigger output there. I'm not sure what the one marked servo is for. Um, and we've got a little processor board here um, and a couple of uh, stepper motor controllers uh, with with no um, yeah with no heat sinks on. So this is the thing I was concerned about with those big fat belts was that you know you're driving the steppers with these little wee chips and <laughs> you know this one's going to basically be driving two steppers which is which is a pretty big load so um i want to minimize the amount of force necessary for that and those those heavy belts are just going to add a whole bunch of mechanical effort to uh, to the situation that's unnecessary so um now one of the reasons i bought this board and uh, wasn't just because it was set up for a laser cutter engraver. It's because um, I wanted to use these little guys, um, which, as you can see, are another... Um, I'll get my arm out of the way, and then it'll stop focusing on my arm. Um, now, these are driver boards, and hopefully uh, they'll pull into focus. So these are made by... Um, uh, MKS and underneath we will see a fabulous little marking there and that little three pointed symbol there means trinamic so these are trinamic silent steppers so um, one of the things I like about the trinamic um, silent steppers is uh, not only um, are they going to just plug right into here boink, uh, but um, my feeling is that um, that this the silent stepper mode also makes the whole movement of the machine smoother so for laser cutting and engraving purposes you know my feeling is that that will improve the um, the performance of the machine now this, as we see, has only got um, X, Y outputs and triggering for the laser. So, um, eh, no good if we want to move the bed. So, the other thing I've got, and I just had this by the by, is um, this uh, other MKS board. Um, this is the BQ um, board, the 1.4 board, and this is a full, um, uh, a full 3D printer controller. So I've been doing a fair bit of work with uh, Repetia firmware, and I know it's got a module in it for um, for uh, triggering a laser. Uh, so this might be what we evolve to when I want to include a Z axis in the in the um, in the machine because with a focusable laser um, to keep the focus point where you want to cut um, you've got to move the the actual um, uh, job that you're cutting uh, upwards so that the laser focuses into the bottom of the kerf that you just cut and and you know, this is how, with multiple passes, um, I'm hoping to be able to cut through relatively thick material. Not super thick, um, up to about 5 millimeters. I'm hoping. So, there's my hardware choices. Um, we're going we're gonna to kick the machine off with this one uh, and, the, and the silent um, sticks, as they call them, and, uh, and see how that goes. Now, there is a 3-axis board um, like this. So, um, you know, um, the uh, this other board doesn't owe me anything. So, um, you know, I might end up 
actually buying one of the three axis boards to, to run the Z axis. But just to get the thing going, get, just to get it set it up, set it up, <laughs> just, to, just to get the whole thing uh, smoking along, uh, we'll, we'll run with this one first. Now the connectors I'm going to be using for this project um, are these little guys here and I'll flash up on the screen what uh, specification or model, name, whatever. Uh, there's a little bit of conjecture about what the actual name of these type of connectors is. But um, I got this kit from DF Robot and I've been really happy with it. It's helped me out on a few different occasions now. You get a big couple of big rolls of pins and you get all the uh, all the connectors. You get some board mount ones and some, some cable mount ones. So I'll be making up some cables for the motors here. And uh, also uh, what I'm going to do is, is, is cut down the, the cable at the motor end and, um, and secure it there and then use the silicone wire um, to, uh, to complete the connection. Now these pins that go into the connectors are fiddly, fiddly little things. And the smart move is to get a specific crimping tool to crimp these onto the cable. And I bought a set of crimps that I thought were the right size, but they turned out to be wrong. Um, these are a lot smaller than the smallest uh, crimping area in the in the crimp jaws. So I'm just going to have to do these manually, and but I do like to um, to solder these as well. So you know I think that's that's um, just good practice to solder uh, when you can. Um, now this is pretty fine wire, but it's not carrying much current, so no big you know drama there. Uh, and so I like to crimp. I've got a wee little pliers here. So this is what the crimp tool would do anyway. Uh, and then crimp this side. And I do all of this before I before I re remove it from this sprue. Uh, I haven't been entirely successful there. Oh, and I've got the creaky chair back. Yes, the creaky chair. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I did manage to trap a couple of little wires there. Um, so I might just put a dob of solder on there now before I try and finish this off. There you go. Did I get all of it? No, not quite. I'm going to burn myself if I do it like that. But now, it's all in a day's work when you're working with, uh, when you're doing soldering, you're, you're likely to give yourself a bit of a scald and a bit of a burn every now and then. It's just part of the rich pageant of life. Okay, so you don't want to overdo it with the solder. You don't want to fill the little end up there if you can avoid it. Uh, am I annoyingly not quite on in shot there? Okay, so we got that one on, and so we'll take it off the tree. Come on, you know you want to. And there she is. And once we've got that done, we'll just fold those over, or else it won't fit inside the body of the connector. So I'm just going to go through and do all of these tails up. And then and then run out uh, enough cable to do the to do the job there with the uh, with the motors. There we have it. So you can make up your own connectors. Now, interestingly, for 
uh, a machine control device like this, um, there aren't any, well, there's no provision for limit switches on this board. Uh, from what I understand, you um, set soft limits uh, on the machine and obviously you position the, you know, the cutting tool, the laser in this case, at a pre-designated point, uh, you know, that's X, Y, zero, and then, you know, the software uh, prevents the machine from crashing. I am going to put some uh, limit switches in my wiring loom, and uh, there's a bunch of, well, there's limit switches in this machine, as you'd expect there would be. Um, so, you know, I'm just future-proofing this. Uh, if I move on to um, a different board, then uh, I'll have limit switches and so forth, you know, because ultimately my goal is to set this up so that I've got a Z-axis working as well, so that I can do multiple passes and cut through thicker stuff with my 5.5 watt laser than I could on a single pass. So uh, that's the plan anyway. Right, we've got a whole bunch of work done since the last time I was down here in the shed. And boy, this has taken a few weeks to get this far. But um, I've now got uh, a cable chain here for the uh, Y axis, is it? No, or the X axis? X. This is the X axis. Um, and I've mounted all of the electronics and power supply and ta ta ta, all that bit down there. And as you see, I've also. Uh, got the beginnings now of a cable loom. Um, I've, you know, recycled and reused as much stuff as I can here, uh, and um, uh, you know the all the wiring now is is practically with the uh, with the silicon. Um, you can see the the cable chain here. This is probably not the optimal way to use a ch cable chain for for this axis, but um, object achieved. You know what you want to achieve with a cable chain is that you don't put stress on the uh, on the cables themselves so uh, you know they get as little you know back and forth as possible and uh, that way uh, you don't get broken connections because of, of wire that's fatigued so uh, I've also put this board on here I've taken the taken the uh, borosilicate uh, glass bed off which I've got up there which I can't be fagged to get down <laughs> um, so I'll just put a piece of uh, MDF uh, here uh, which is going to be more or less a spoil board and uh, now the, all that remains to be done is to hook up all the wires so this is the LX Maker software and it's pretty straightforward um, We've got some uh, some jog controls up here. Um, now, because this machine's running uh, soft limits, not hard limits, i.e. we're not using switches to set the zero points, uh, the idea is that you'll move the mechanism around with the jog, and then you'll hit set zero, and that'll set your x, y, zero point. So, um, the, uh, the software will go looking for the LX Maker board on this, um, at the moment it's selected COM5. Uh, when you first plug this in, uh, you, you, you'll, you'll get a, if you're not plugged in, you'll, you'll get a, a, an error message here. Then you plug in and then you hit the refresh here uh, and, and, uh, and hopefully it will then pick up the uh, pickup the board and assign it to a COM port. Uh, and one of the things I've noticed using machines over the years with Windows is that it tends to create ports and and then sometimes not reuse them and it just hangs on to them. You can end up with a whole bunch of, of COM ports or virtual COM ports that you're not using. So um, what I'll do now is um, power up the machine and then we'll uh, see what kind of excitement we can generate. Okay, so we go back to the 
uh, jog controls here. Now we can jog and jog that way. That's looking a lot better than it was before. Uh, I've got that set to 50 millimeters now. I'll reset it to 10. Now this is one thing that I have to check is how accurate the movement is. Um, because uh, that's another critical factor here. So we have movement. And um, what we also should be able to do is activate the laser. Now, I had a problem with the laser before, uh, in as much as every time I um, plugged it into the the um, the power supply for the laser, which is separate to the laser head itself, um, it was coming on full full strength, and uh, I couldn't figure out why, because it worked so well when we did the testing in the other video. And it turns out that um, I had the wire for the TTL, um, I had the wires uh, in the wrong sequence in the, in the connector. So it wasn't picking up the ground to tell the power supply that it was plugged into a controller. Because otherwise, um, yes, it would just come on full strength every time because um, with, the, uh, with the power supply, uh, slash controller, uh, no, the power supply rather for the for the um, for the unit. Um, you know it wouldn't get. Uh, there's, there's no on-off switch for it, so uh, it's either on or off depending on whether it's powered or not powered. So what I should be able to do now is switch the laser on, and we'll just click here and yeah, it's not working. So here's the laser test. This is weak on, and as you see, there it is. And this is laser on, where it's full power. Okay, so you've got that ability to switch the laser to a low power output for focusing. Um, so that is something that will uh, that will do. And but prior to that, I just want to check out if um, the mechanism is moving accurately. So um, I'll be using these uh, 10 mil increments to start with and then we'll work it down to smaller increments. Okay, so for this I'm gonna use um, you know, a really super scientific method. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm gonna use a pencil and I'm gonna jog the XY. So here we go with a Y jog. And so, so I know where I'm at. Just got to keep the pencil at the right angle when I do that. Now there's every chance that this won't be accurate because I've actually um, got different, we've got different, um, those different pulleys are a different diameter. So this may or may not be, man, that's close. That is super close. <laughs> I'm not gonna bother messing with that. Okay, now the other advantage of having a um, an old 3D printer like this is that I've, I've still got um, a Z axis. So now I can set this I can set this spoil board, as it is now, to whatever height I want. So I can do my focusing, and then uh, set the um, set the spoil board up to a good height for the focus. Last time I focused this laser, I found that it really um, was. Uh, it seemed to me it it was the the lens was a long way out um, on the um, on the threads when I finished focusing it but uh, anyway we'll pop on our laser safety glasses and we'll 
we'll go to weak mode, click, and there's our little now I've got to somehow now I thought I'd been so clever the way I designed this but it turns out I probably haven't been that clever now, how am I going to attack this I might have to come in from either side that seems to be working now So as you see, the this is not a dot, it's more like a bar. So I've probably got my arm in the way there, haven't I? <laughs> you can't see a darn thing. Um, so I'm just bring this down to the smallest dot that I can. All things still a bit wibbly. Alright, and that's about as small as I can get it. Right there. Okay. So, we're focused. I think we'll just load up a picture. There might be something here in this gallery. And then just yeah twenty by twenty. Let's generate that. And so this is going to do a raster car. Setting, default laser power. What if we make it maximum? And it's definitely the amount of board. So what if we start that? And he says without his laser safety goggles on. poo at what we've got now well, here's our little figure and as I <laughs> as I postulated um, he's been carved out more than um, yes he's been carved out more than rasted on so yeah well, we might have another go at this but I, I you know one of the things I'm I'm quite um, impressed with is how detailed that is. So here's our little guy. Cut out. Whoa. That's pretty good. <laughs> not exactly what I was wanting, but uh, but you know, not too bad. So there we have it. This is the new Leapfrog laser engraver and hopefully cutter. Hope you enjoyed the video. I know it's a bit lengthy and uh, maybe it doesn't go into a lot of detail on things, but uh, the next video I'm going to do, I will go into detail on operating the software and you know more in more detail of how to run the machine and the different modes that are available in the software. 
The other thing that I want to do with this machine is to make it properly carve a profile. That's what I really wanted uh, to set this machine up to do. Uh, less engraving, more cutting. So to that end, I'll be exploring some other ways of driving the machine and see if uh, I can get this you know, into the mode that I want, which is, which is cutting relatively thick materials. Uh, you know, not too thick. So if you enjoy the video, um, like and subscribe, and uh, hopefully it won't take me as long as it took <laughs> from, from when I started this video to where we get the next one. Uh, but, you know, I have only got my spare time to do these in. Well, that's it for this one, and onward and upward.